Welcome to iLecture Online. Here we have a good video to show us some very important properties of the determinant of a matrix. Keeping it simple, we'll deal with two by two matrices. We have two of them, A and B, and we're going to find the determinant of A, the determinant of B, and then the determinant of the product of A and B, and the determinant of the product of B times A. And some very interesting results will come which allow us to come up with some general conclusion of how to deal with things like that. So first, let's do the easy part. Let's find the determinants of A and B. The determinant of A is equal to the product of the diagonal here. That's minus 2 times 3 minus the product of those two, which is 4 times 5, which is equal to a minus 6 minus 20, which is minus 26. Now let's do the determinant of B. And here we get 1 times 2 minus the minus 3 times a minus 4, which gives us 2 minus 12, which is minus 10. So those are the results when we get the determinant of A and B. Now let's multiply A and B together. When we multiply a times b, we get the following. Four, Here we have five, minus two, and three, and then we multiply that times the matrix one minus two. three minus. That gives us a two by two matrix, and for the first element, we get by multiplying those two together minus two times one minus two plus four times a minus four. That's minus two minus sixteen, which gives us minus eighteen in this element. To get the second element, we multiply those two together. Minus 2 times minus 3 is 6, plus 4 times 2, which is 8. 6 plus 8, that gives us 14. Here, to get the third element down here, we multiply this times this. So that's 5 times 1, that's 5, plus 3 times negative 4, minus 12. 5 minus 12, minus 7. And finally, we multiply this row and that column together. 5 times negative 3 is minus 15, plus 6 is minus 9. We might as well also do the product b times a while we're at it. So here we have b times a and that is equal to and you'll find that's not going to be the same matrix when we flip them when we take them in reverse we'll get something different. So here we write 1 minus 4 minus 3 and 2 and we multiply that times the matrix a which is minus 2 and 3. Four. So again we get a 2 by 2 matrix. To get the first element up there, we multiply the first row times the first column. Minus 2, minus 15, that's minus 17. To get the second element, this row times this column. 4, minus 9, that would be minus 5. This element here is this row, that column, that's 8, plus 10, that's 18. And finally, here we get this row, that column, that's minus 16, plus 6, that would be minus 10. Notice we did not get the same product when we flipped the order of the matrices. Now we're going to find the determinant of AB, which is equal to the determinant of the product matrix here, which is minus 18, minus 7, minus 9. 14. And that would be equal to the product of those two, which is minus 18, minus 9, minus the product of those two, which would be minus 7 times 14. This is equal to, that's like 180 minus 18, that's 162, positive 162, minus, uh, no, that would be plus, because minus times a minus is a plus, 7 times 14, that's uh, 98. When you add those together, we get 260. So the determinant of A times B is 260. Now let's find the determinant of B times A. So the determinant of B times A is equal to the determinant of that product matrix, which is minus 17 minus and minus five. 10. So we do the same way. So this is equal to the product of minus 17 times minus 10 minus the product of those two, which is minus 5 times 18. This gives us, that's a positive 170, minus times a minus is plus, plus 90, which turns out is also exactly the same. Notice that the determinant of A times B 
is equal to the determinant of b times a. And then you might have noticed that if you look over here, the determinant of a is minus 26, and the determinant b is minus 10. If we now multiply these two together, so let's do that over here, the determinant of a multiplied times the determinant of b, and I should put parentheses around it like that, this is equal to minus 26 multiplied times a minus 10, which is also 260. In other words, we can now draw the conclusion that the product of the determinant of a multiplied times the determinant of a is equal to the determinant of a times b, which is equal to the determinant of b times a. And that's a really good piece of information to keep in your memory when you're working with matrices and determinants. So now you can see that if you have a determinant A and you have a determinant B, if you multiply those together, that is equal to the determinant of the product of the two matrices, regardless of the order you place them in. Very good to know. And that's how we proved it. Actually, it's not a proof because there could be other cases where it doesn't work, but believe me, it does work for every case. And so this is just an example of how it works. <laughs> I'm sorry, I go, mmm, she's not going to like that. <laughs>